nombre es Ginés Bedoya, soy de Colombia. Hace 12 años fui secuestrada, torturada y abusada. Y a raíz de esa experiencia decidí eh, hablar con las mujeres que no tienen voz en mi país y seguir adelante trabajando en mi país. Este premio eh, me ha hecho entender que ahora ya no solamente soy la voz de las mujeres en Colombia, sino la voz de las mujeres en el mundo y es eh, un compromiso muy grande para poder ser la, el rostro de ellas. El mejor mensaje, o el mayor mensaje que yo les puedo enviar a ellas es que este no es el momento de callar, es el momento de levantar la voz, es el momento de denunciar, es el momento de pedir justicia. Sé que nos llenamos de miedo, que hay muchas inseguridades, pero somos cada día más y es el momento de hablar, no se queden calladas. Um, yo soy de Sama María. وفي فترة الثورة يعني بسبب ما رأيته من ظلم في المدن الليبية المختلفة كنت أسكن يعني من سلطان مدينة طرابلس فقررت أن أكشف جرائم القذافي وأعوانه لكل العالم الخارجي هذا الدور الذي قمت به في الثورة هو كشف جرائم القذافي للعالم الخارجي ونقل المأساة التي يعيشها المدنيين شعوري أنا سعيدة بالجائزة هذه لأن الجائزة أعتبرها ليست مقدمة لي شخصيا بل مقدمة لكل الشعب الليبي اعترافا بشجاعته وخصوصا النساء لأن كان لهم دور كبير في هذه الثورة والله رسالة للنساء الليبيات أن نطلب منهم أن هم يستمروا في المشوار لأن كان لهم دور كبير في ثورة في ثورة ليبيا لأن النساء عندنا يشكلون نصف المجتمع الليبي فلو غاب هذا المجتمع لن تنجح ليبيا في إنشاء دولة جديدة يعني في المستقبل. My name is Lemam Bowie and I'm a peace and women's rights activist from Liberia and a co-winner of the 2011 Nobel Peace Prize. Well, I believe that women and girls are 50% if you're looking at numbers and if you want to rationalize because usually people look at, um, let's count the impact in tangible ways. 50% of the work, the population of our communities consists of women and girls and if you include women and girls, you're including half of the population. The burden for success is not on one part or one segment of the population. That's the first thing. The second thing is there are issues, needs, and priorities, issues, needs, priorities, and concerns of women that are, can only be addressed if these women are involved in some of the, 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 the difficult decision-making issues, specifically as it relates to foreign policy and different things. But also we are at a place now globally where it is, if not difficult, almost impossible to do any form of advocacy around any issue without adding the voices of women. Well, it's the first time I saw her at work, it was like a breath of fresh air. Finally, we have someone sitting at a place, a position of authority, especially in a powerful country like America, who's speaking the language that we've been speaking and no one has been listening to us, the rights of women as human rights. Um, women's inclusion and involvement in peace and security processes, women's economic development. So it, it came as a real breath of fresh air for me. But beyond that, given the position of the United States and given her position as Secretary of State, people pay attention, world leaders pay attention. And even if they don't want to because they want to keep that formal tie with um, the U.S., sometimes they have to pay attention. But also, when you look at her work and look at her life and look at the way she advocates for women's rights, it's not a political play. It is part of her being, and that's why it's so important. I think the first thing we have to look at is um, education for girls and women, making it available, affordable, and making it an issue of rights, like the MDG3 has proffered. That's the first thing. The second thing is also trying to implement some of those policies we've really seen a lot globally on paper. What we haven't seen, the political will and the resources to back some of those things. Those are two cardinal things I think that needs to happen in order for women and girls to actively participate in economic development in their different countries.